All right, guys. Now, usually, typically once a day, once every couple of days, I've got a Google alert set up that sends me, uh, just alerts me when New Planet Zoo articles have came out or they popped up somewhere. And uh, I got a really interesting ping this morning. Um, and it was from Rebecca Naus from The Gamer. It's a, it's a online, it's a gaming website. And um, she had put together 10 things Frontier needs to fix in Planet Zoo based on the beta. And um, really, really well, the one that caught my attention so uh kind of so interestingly is um it's she she hits on a lot of what uh reddit was saying what the forums bring up um and then some of the things that are on the list are kind of just i kind of chalk them up to beta's gonna beta um, but nonetheless, she makes some really, really good points in this. And I think we can, we'll go down through her list from 10 to number one and kind of, um, maybe, maybe do some little picking and digging here and there. And, uh, and of course, use your guys's feedback. Once you've listened and kind of read the article, I'll link it down below and, um, see if you kind of think Rebecca's list holds weight and um, or if you think a lot of this list is just chalked up to uh, it, it's a beta and you know there's a lot of this stuff will be ironed out a lot of it was touched on or it was tried to be ironed out at like once the beta was actively happening um, so yeah we'll just jump right into it she actually posted this yesterday so this was from the 11th but like I said it'll be in the it'll be in the description box below so you can kind of go read up on it um, yourself and kind of give us thoughts on it but uh, she starts out it says planet zoo's beta is officially over and after a few bumps many would consider it a success we have already seen some fixes like animal breeding where players ended up with hundreds of babies in seconds but there is still more to be done it seems the overall aspect of the game is fun to play while some more subtle reasons might have players shutting off their computers so one thing that she first starts um, right when she gets uh, right right when this whole article starts is uh, we have uncovered some of the things that Frontier needs to fix before they officially release the game most of them are small and in, in minuscule details but to true fans they do matter keep reading to learn about 10 things Frontier needs to fix in Planet Zoo based on the beta 10 issues with breeding and fighting when the beta started off animals were breeding like crazy but with one of their updates they fixed this issue and created another at the same time there were several animals like tortoises that still had high breeding rates which actually for me my two tortoises i never could get them to breed not once and you know they were they were like in my game for what 50 something in game years um never ne never bred at all um, and then she says, while other users reported that lions had not birthed a single cub in over 10 years, um, there were also several reports of animals being consistently injured, especially in predator species, as they tried to kill one another. It seemed that every time an animal aged up, there was, an in there was instantly a battle. These two things put a damper on a game that users otherwise enjoyed, and it often led to protest and bankruptcy. Um, and like we said before, I never actually got to the point of of uh the, the, to a point of getting lions it was just all too expensive and um and actually she hits on that as well but um the only thing that I was able to consistently breed were, were the African wild dogs. That was the only thing I could breed and sell. But as far as selling them, you know, in a, um, in an, in a, uh, like an acceptable manner, they were like, I could only get like seven or eight, um, conservation credits for them. And they would never, I could never breed. Like people say, just start a, like a puppy farm thing. You know, they, uh, I have hundreds of wild dogs that, that I breed and sell and like these people have thousands of conservation points I never could get to that point either like they would breed normally they would have like one or two pups and I would let them get to adulthood and sell them but if I was lucky I would get eight nine sometimes 12 credits and it like wasn't even enough to to buy like a to rebuy a um like a ring-tailed lemur um so that was kind of my issue with breeding I just never really could get that down 
Um, number nine, user interface and gameplay depth. Uh, many users have offered up their complaints about the depth of the gameplay and campaign itself. It is all relatively easy and doesn't take any thinking as you research and place items for every challenge. They find the management side to be a little too simple, but it is obvious they are putting a larger focus on the creative side of these zoos. Users are also unhappy with the user interface that is enacted in the game. They want to be able to click on an animal or guest and follow it while still showing their stats. The tab that gives you access to all of your tools can also be confusing, especially when you first start the game. And I kind of agree with her on that. There's definitely going to be a, a learning curve. Um, and I don't think even even being used to the Planko universe, aka Planet Coaster players, um, it's still, like I said, the UI to me seemed a hair clunky, uh, menus loading pretty slow. Um, just like I said, the, the information is kind of a little all over the place, um, but I think maybe that can be tooled with updates, and um, I don't know how much of that can be changed um, in the next 24 days, but I definitely see a U, some UI issues popping out, um, but that hopefully can be ironed out. Um, for release. Um, number eight, she put giraffes don't act like giraffes. Um, I can't really speak on this, so I'll go ahead and just tell you what she said. Um, some of the um, some of the uh, the actions that she describes, though, in the article, I do chalk up to beta's gonna beta. Um, and she actually even uses Rudy's screenshot of his giraffe climbing up on the shelter roof. Um, and she says these large animals seem like something Frontier could have easily mastered, but after the Beta, it has users slightly concerned. These creatures were seen climbing on rooftops and walking on water, which is something out of the ordinary. There were other animals as well with issues, as baby animals never grew out of their baby state, and we saw that looked like a lion cub become the leader of the pride. It was hilarious to see the reactions by users, but it did take some of the magic out of it because players expect it to be as realistic as possible. And like I said, without ever being able to actually um, witness a giraffe in my personal game, can't really speak on it. I will probably go ahead and chalk that one up and give it to Frontier as uh, as beta issues. Um, number seven, probably the most the the biggest issue that we saw feedback from from all spectrums from from Frontier or from the forums to the Reddit to Facebook to Twitter to Instagram. Keepers not feeding the animals. The keepers struggled to feed the animals and care for them in other manners. There were several complaints of these workers neglecting to clean or even choose to leave boxes uh, in the middle of a path. Um, and I think that is that is another thing that will be hammered out um, surely uh, before the before the full release. Um, because we had I had that, that you I couldn't even tell you how many Nile monitors I had died just because the feeders would. Um, would walk in and just turn, look around, turn around, walk right back out. And uh, the only thing I, I noticed where is if, if an animal was starving, if I'd pick them up and it would put them in the box real quick and I would swing them back over like towards the door or place them really near their food and unbox them, typically they would try to walk over and start eating or drinking. But of course, we still did have the issues where like the animals were dying five feet from the water bowl so that is something else hopefully that is uh, just beta type issues um, and uh, I think hopefully that will be uh, that will be worked out number six inflated prices in the market the market was a place where users could buy animals from other players as well as sell the ones they didn't want it was a broken system because players inflated their prices to amounts that were unbelievably high and the only way to earn conservation points in the beta was to sell your own animals this made it very difficult for players to buy certain animals especially when you couldn't buy them for cash which was much easier to earn. Players have been suggested that the developers cap pricing on the animals or add more reasonably priced animals to the market in order to solve this major issue. Um, Best in Slot had some good, uh, you know, had some good... Um, theories on this and not necessarily as far as capping the animal prices but always making frontier you know frontier 
pricing in there. So, you know, if, if you ended up, if you are going to be a dick and charge a, an absorbent amount of money for your elephants or giraffes or lions, what have you, um, people just won't buy yours. They'll go to the frontier version. Um, even if the frontier version is not of higher quality animal, which I think frontier could tweak that. I'm not saying frontier bring out like gold, you know, lions and sell them for 200 conservation points, but don't, stop people. Like I said, I'm probably not even going to play this mode um, probably ever. So I won't really have to worry about this mess. But for people that want to have this animal market feel, um, this this whole type of, um, you know, this kind of like this multiplayer type mode with this franchise mode, um, hopefully with the full release, Frontier can address this because um, it was a little bit of a train wreck. Um, Animals not loading. I think uh, people waiting 20, 30 minutes for a lemur, for a female lemur, stuff like that. Um, Just totally, total nonsense. That has to be worked out. Um, And if that means Frontier bringing, like there's always default conservation Frontier prices that are, uh, that are more reasonable attainable um, that is something that they're gonna have to do um, and uh, she touches on that um, with with uh, with number six on stuff stuff that needs to be fixed uh, number five the research seems the research system feels backward uh, players are confused by what they would set up the game on who on on why they would set up the game so you can only perform research after you had adopted an animal. The animal has certain needs that must be addressed in order for it to live, but by the time you researched its needs, the animal was already dead. It made it difficult to expand your zoo and to move on to bigger and better things when you were constantly battling the clock to try and save your dying animal that should have been in this that should have never been in in this state in the first place. And um, I think that is definitely. Um, she hits on a little thing about that that I think needs tweaking as far as the the quickness of the animal welfare draining. Um, but at the same time, we couldn't get the vets to research fast enough to give them the food enrichment and the um, and the toy enrichment. Um, I didn't necessarily have a major problem with that. I found as long as you make the habitat suitable enough and they are, you don't get bit by the not eating or drinking deal. Um, I was able to keep them alive long enough to uh, to force the vets to do the research to bring their food enrichment and their toy enrichment to life and uh, get everything in the green. So it may not be as dire as she's making the research seem, at least for me it wasn't because I, I immediately, of course, although I completely understand what she's saying, but as long as I got the terraforming correct um, and the um, the terrain correct, I was able to usually typically keep them alive long enough to get the research done. Um, but I definitely feel that is something they're going to have to touch on. Um, like she alludes to with the research feeling a little backwards on this. Um, next she goes on to say path placement. Um, this is really a big area of contention in the Planko universe. A lot of people say the path has been broken since uh, planet coaster. It's like a flawed design. Um, and, uh, obviously they have not changed that within the planet zoo universe. So it's kind of one of those things where you're going to have to just get used to it and practice with it and work around it. Um, because this is obviously the model that they're using, that they're going to have to use. I don't know if they're boxed in by this. I don't know how many tweaks have been made or can be made. Um, I know basically for me, it was the same experience as Planet Coaster. I was able to go in and manipulate it for pretty much how I needed to. So to me, somebody that's been in the Planet Coaster, Planco universe for three years now, um, going on four years, uh, it wasn't really a big deal, but I definitely see um, where there are going to be issues for new players. And she says, gamers who have figured out how to place pass with ease are considered magicians in this game because it often takes a lot of practice. There are times where paths don't want to connect or they decide that the flat terrain isn't flat enough for a path. And she said, this system has been in place since the release of Planet Coaster and is still has not changed despite the many complaints given by players over the course of this game. This is one item on the list we don't see changing, but we can always dream of a future with a better 
path system and she kind of hits hints on there at the end this is it kind of is what it is at this point um, number three slow down the time a single year passes by in the game in about 20 minutes but this is a bit too fast for gamers they want to be able to spend time upgrading their zoo but with this speed it seems they are constantly racing against the clock many players have asked for the speed to be decreased so it's about an hour or so for every year in the game this would give players ease of mind and help them lose fewer animals to things like research underfeeding and overbreeding um, definitely I, I agree with her there that needs to be tweaked um, ease, uh, you know obviously I think that is an easily um, easily attainable tweak um, to just kind of slow this down a little bit um, and who knows maybe in the sandbox mode we're saying a lot of this based on the franchise mode because that was the you know the only part that we were given access to besides the uh, kind of like the little campaign walkthrough um, but maybe with uh, sandbox mode time may not be an issue um, at all maybe be even be able something that can be kind of turned off like a lot of people were saying wondering if you can turn the aging of the animals off and that sort of thing so I don't know we'll just kind of have to see how that goes number two on the gamers list conservation points are hard to earn this might not be a huge issue if all the animals in the market could be bought with cash unfortunately the only way to earn these points in the beta was to sell your animals people ended up creating ostrich tortoises tortoises and warthog farms in order to continuously sell their animals in exchange for conservation points if it made the game feel not like a zoo at all and took away of the concept of conservation as it turned into a breeding frenzy the animals they could sell also didn't bring in many points as everyone else was trying to sell the same animals so it ended up being a broken system and like you know kind of like we talked at the beginning of the video um, I understand her point on that with the jacking up of the pricing. Um, I never really could get into it and, um, it was just uh, definitely something that will that will definitely take some tweaking uh, once the full release comes out or once the, uh, you know, leading up to the full release. And like we said, as the making of this video, what do they have, 24, 25 days left? So uh, definitely getting down to the end before this, uh, before this full release is upon us. And her uh, number one issue is foliage maximums. <laughs> this game is based on creativity and users are upset that many animals animals have foliage limits. It is understandable that some might, some might not like exhibits filled with trees or shrubs, but it tend to make it tends to make some exhibits look too barren. They should instead change the limits to be minimums only in order to give users a wider range to use their creative abilities. We want exhibits to look aesthetically pleasing, but it seems Frontier doesn't want that to happen with the current setup of the game. And, um, you know, I think that was another thing too when we were talking about um, that with my uh, Wiggles, my first habitat, I, it was, once I got it down, it looked incredible, but um, it really hampered where he wanted to be, and I think a lot of players are kind of like harping on that, like, we want our exhibit to have more than two trees in a bush, but if you do that, the animals are kind of like that, just weighs on them extremely too terribly, and I think that's something they're going to have to hit on. We want, as far as I go, I want Want lush, uh, fully foliage, foliage uh, type exhibits. Um, I am not, you know me from the Planet Coaster days. I am not the type that wants to lay down one tree in a bush and uh, and call it a day and move on to the next exhibit. So um, all in all, man, I think she hits on some pretty good points here. Definitely hits at the uh, at the core of the ten issues that a lot of players were talking about. So uh, good on Rebecca on this. And um, like I said, it's in really she's really kind of constructive to it um, because, like I said, at the end of the day, Frontier they're not in the business of putting out a bad product and uh, I think these guys are working incredibly hard to uh, to give us these fixes and make this the most enjoyable um, the most enjoyable product that they that they can they know a lot of people have been waiting years and years for a proper uh, zoo tycoon spiritual successor and um, this is definitely them taking the best stab at it that they can 
And um, I, like I said, I am just, I am waiting. To, I cannot wait to get my hands on this sandbox mode. As a lot of you guys know, that is what I am in it for. But anyways, guys, yeah, like always, let me know your thoughts down below. Let me know what you think about her article. What some things that she missed that we could touch on. And what were some of your biggest issues you think that they will need to fix leading up to this, uh, leading up to this full release. So I'm S10 Wolf. Don't forget to smash that like button if you end up enjoying this video. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to keep up with more Planet Zoo content. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thank you. See you guys.